Hello students. Today we're going to do a quick video about ch chapter one, our number system. So first let's talk about base 10, which is the base of our number system. So this is kind of a general, a general discussion. I don't mean to insult you by this. This is just to get the topic off the ground. Um, in our number system, 582 is a different number from 285. This is not news to you. You already know this. But what's interesting, I suppose, about our number system and is different from others is that uh, notice the digits are the same. We have 582 and 285. They're just arranged in a different order and a different order gets you a different number. So even though the two numbers have the same digits, order matters. In fact, a number like 582 is a shorthand way of writing this. 5 times 100 plus 8 times 10 plus 2 times 1. And the reason we say our number system is base 10 is because each of these uh, places, like the position in the uh, number, like the position of a digit in the number, tells you what power of 10 you're multiplying it by. So where 582 is shorthand for 5 times 100 plus 8 times 10 plus 2 times 1, you know, 1 is 10 to the 0, 10 is 10 to the 1, 100 is 10 to the 2. Um, something like 285 is a shorthand way of writing. I'll pause and let you think about it. It's just 2 times 100 plus 8 times 10 plus 5 times 1. Okay, 582 is 500 plus 80 plus 2. 285 is 200 plus 80 plus 5. And yeah, so our system of writing has uh, is really shorthand and we don't even think about it anymore. I mean, at this point in our lives, you just write numbers and you know this, but it, yeah, you've stopped thinking about this a long time ago and I'm just trying to bring it to the forefront again. So here's uh, a question that I think is kind of interesting. All right, we'll grant that 582 and 285 are shorthand for um, these longer expressions. What is that make what's 0. 0.47 shorthand for? So I encourage you to pause and think about this for a moment. Well, it turns out that for 0. 0.47 is shorthand for four times one tenth plus seven times one one hundredth. Um, and so if you're writing these powers of 10, which you know we're not going to spend a lot of time doing in this class, but just if that's something you're comfortable with, one tenth is 10 to the negative one and one one hundredth is 10 to the negative two. Um, but in any case, the now as you go to the right of the decimal point, you are dividing by powers of 100 instead of multiplying by powers of 100 or <laughs> powers of 10. Ah, dividing by powers of 10 if you're to the right of the decimal point and multiplying by powers of 10 if you're to the left of the decimal point. So here's an example of a problem you might see uh, in the homework or in your practice problems. Something like write 582.47 in what we are calling, quote, expanded form. And so that is just taking all of these digits and writing them out as their, um, what they are multiplied times these powers of 10. So this would be the correct answer for writing 582.47 in expanded form. Now, these uh, we are talking about place values uh, also in this chapter, and so we call five is in the hundreds place because all right, it's five times one hundred. Well, this five is going to be in the hundreds place. This eight we say is in the tens place because we're saying how many tens we're collecting. So we've got five hundreds, eight tens, eight's in the tens place. Two is in the ones place. Four is in the tenths place, and seven is in the 
hundredths place. Okay, so you've got something like this number written in expanded form. Now you might get a question um, about rounding. And again, I know you've uh, all likely seen rounding in high school, but uh, I wouldn't be doing this if uh, I hadn't seen people get tripped up on this. So let's just review it. Let's say uh, I asked you to round 582.47 to the tens place. Well, all right, if you, um, if you remember rounding, why don't you try to do this right now for a moment? Okay, so 582.47, rounding to the tens place, what we do is we look at the tens place. So eights in the tens place. So we have 582.47, and you look to the number, the digit just to the right of the place that you are asked to round to. And if that digit is zero, one, two, three, four, then you leave the tens place alone. You make everything else to the right zero, and that's your number. So rounding to the tens place is 580. Um, whoa, here, let me go back. Um, but if this number two, if uh, the digit to the right is five through nine, then you would make the tens place, you would add one to the tens place and make everything to the right zero. So now let's look at this number and let's say, let's round 582.47 to the tenths place. Well, that's the four. And again, you look at the digit to the right. If it's zero through four, you leave the tenths place alone and make everything to the right zero. And if the digit to the right is five through nine, you add one to the original place and then you make everything to the right zero. In this case, uh, all right, the number to the right of the tenths place is seven. So we add one to four and we turn the seven into a zero. Uh, yeah, wait, yeah, no, I did it right. I did it right. 582.47 goes to 582.5. Okay, so hopefully this is just review and kind of getting your wheel spinning on this. Uh, and I just want to end with some helpful tips for rounding. One, if we're talking about money, pretty much always round to two places after the decimal point, like round to the nearest cent, basically. Um, yeah, if we're like, yeah, talking about dollars or something, don't include six decimal places after the, or, or yeah, don't include six places after the decimal unless I maybe tell you to. Um, I mean, maybe I'll give you something with, that originally has a lot of decimal places, and but uh, don't just immediately round. Do all your calculations, and that at the end round to two decimal places. Um, okay, but in the case where numbers represent whole objects like people, uh, then round to the nearest whole number. It uh, yeah doesn't usually make sense to say, oh, well, there will be like 3.4 people at the, um, at the event. That doesn't, yeah, that doesn't make sense. So if you are rounding to, or if you're rounding a number that is representing an object and that object can't be divided, then it makes sense to round to the nearest whole number. And a uh, very helpful tip, do not round too early. So as much as possible, leave rounding to the very end. Any digits that you have, keep them as long as possible, and then at the very end, round as in the way that is appropriate. And finally, if a problem doesn't say where to round, and it doesn't involve money, and it doesn't involve whole objects, then okay, usually rounding to one or two places after the decimal point is fine. Okay, hope that helps you. Uh, and prepares you for being able to do the practice problems and then the homework. Thank you.